Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we've got this beautiful Passat here. The reason it's here is to get the check engine light off, just regular Volkswagen things. So sounds easy until I mention that it's been to the dealer and already had $2,000 or almost $2,000 spent on it to fix this issue and the light came back on. So it's got a fair bit of money tied up into it already. Um, it just wants the check engine light off, just quick and simple, but as you know, TDIs can sometimes complicate things a little bit. So let's go over what code or codes are there and then uh, do a plan of attack. So I actually, I don't know what code was throwing it before, but I do know he spent $1,700 on a Knox sensor, which it came back. So obviously the Knox sensor didn't fix the issue, but if you take a look, I've got five other faults here yet. So go to the top, P0401 EGR system insufficient flow. So that's a fairly common one on the CJAAs. Um, done a video on that one. Exhaust gas recirculation system P240F response too slow. That can tie in with that P0401. Glow plug incorrect installation. So that one, I think there's something to do with an updated uh, glow plug controller or wait until the glow plugs stop glowing before you crank it so i think that's just somebody cranked it too quick um, we are back at that Knox sensor issue and then egr system is sufficient flow so again fault frequency 46 times so those egr codes um, could definitely contribute to higher than normal Knox output and higher than normal um, depth Usage. So what happens with the CJAA with that is the DPF cracks and allows soot through and then it blocks the EGR filter. So usually a quick and easy test. If you go to the tailpipe, and if there's soot there, that's not a good sign. That's showing your DPF is cracked. So I haven't seen that on a Passat. But let's get this thing up in the air and take a look. I'm kind of thinking the lack of EGR working might be contributing to a higher than normal NOx output. So I wanna check and make sure that that filter's actually clogged and that the DPF is cracked. And then we're gonna have some few options to go over there. Okay, so underneath the car, this is your CV subframes right here. And that's your DPF. And this little hole that's open is the EGR cooler. If the DPF is effing the DP, um, if it's filtering the diesel particulates, there shouldn't be any soot making it to this point. And same thing, if you stick your finger in the, wherever it is, the outlet out of the exhaust, same thing, it's really sooty. So I'm leaning towards a cracked DPF letting soot through. And then there's actually, there's a little filter here so I think the main objective is this low pressure system goes through the cooler and then it gets feed fed into the low pressure side of your turbo. So it goes through your compressor wheel yet. So I think that filter is kind of there to try and if this happens to stop any particulate from getting fed into your turbo. I don't think the, it's kind of sandblasting your turbo almost if all that soot's getting fed through. So I think that's the whole idea of this filter, but it's plugged. Okay, so gasket side is the cooler side and this v-band looking side would be the downpipe connection so if we use my really fancy camera here you'll see it's got like a really tight mesh and if you look the mesh is right full of soot we go to the other side you see a little bit of soot starting to come through it But I've got a feeling that will be, you can hardly even tell that's mesh on this side. So I'm going to get the downpipe undone. I want to scope the uh, bottom side of the DPF and see if we can't see the crack on the CJAA that I did. You could see like if the DPF was a nice circle here, you could see just a nice jagged crack where soot went through because the filter element should all be white but you can see a little bit of soot coming through like the center so we'll uh look at the downpipe off and we'll see okay so i'm under the car here the downpipe bolts 
they do not look nice at all. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to try and break those off to get this downpipe off. So I've got two ideas. So if I didn't find soot in the DPF or the, um, well, after the DPF and into the EGR filter, there's two other spots I was gonna check. So I'm not sure how, like I don't have access to Volkswagen manuals because I'm not a Volkswagen tech. I just film all the issues that I have with family and friends vehicles. But the first thing I was gonna check would be the def injector. If it's not injecting or say it's dribbling, um, you'll end up with like a layer of dried up def here and then it can't actually inject it where it needs to be. And you also want a nice mist, a nice spray pattern. So you can undo this V-band kind of hang it down and then VCDS should have an output test for that. So we're gonna check that out. Uh, the other thing, that P204F, the um, slow response, what I ran into a few times is this EGR or the exhaust flap gets seized or stiff and then it can't close. So this closes up and it should make increased back pressure here. And then it's easier to force exhaust into the turbo that way when this is closed up. So. I would think you would throw a code for this because that's what the CJAAs did, but we're gonna drop this down because we've got lots of lots of slack, so we're gonna try an output test on that. But this is the new um, Knox module, and then they run the wires back. The sensor is behind that flap, and then that's why all those wires hanging down because they didn't zip tie it all back up. So that's not real cool, but it is what it is. So. I'll probably undo these first, get the exhaust flap down and get this def injector down and then we'll do some output tests just for the fun of it. Okay, so we got the def injector just hanging out here. Everything looks pretty decent on it. Um, so I run this output test. I'm going to want to try and catch all the def. It might do a great job in reducing NOx, but it's terrible, terrible stuff. So it's corrosive. Uh, I don't really want it on my floor or my jack. So I'm gonna get a container to catch it and we'll run that output test. And then as far as the exhaust flap, which is on this side here, I'm not even gonna run the output test on that. That's nice and free. So a lot of times what'll happen is it'll get stuck something like that when you push on it and not spring back to the inline position. So no doubt that that's working correctly. So the only thing that I'm going to actual test is the def injector. Okay, so we're on VCDS, we're on output tests. So you can do the drop down here. Um, so if you want, you can run the exhaust flap and hit start. It's closed, open. So it's not really rocket science. So then as far as the def or SCR, I'm not sure which one I need. Hear a nice click there. That doesn't really mean much to me though. Not sure which that one does either. Again, not really. What I'm looking for, switch over valve. Um, so that'll be the valve in the back. And pump for reducing agent. So I can just hear the pump sitting there, the def pump running. Def injector isn't leaking, so. I guess, so I know on farm equipment, usually you can do a DEF injector test where it'll run the pump and the injector at the same time and you can catch the DEF and make sure it's got a nice spray, but obviously you can't or I don't know how to. So I guess both of those pass my half-ass test. Um, the port where it goes into is nice and clean. So it's not like it's all crystallized and leaking and stuff like that. So I'm thinking it is strictly the DPF issue 
So I'm gonna get this downpipe knocked off here and then we're gonna scope and see what the DPF looks like. Okay, so we got this downpipe off. Lots of soot in there. We've also got the DPF off as well, so same kind of thing. Lots of wet soot. And then when we scope it here, you can see that's the DPF substrate. So the CJAA that I did, you can see the cracks. I'll probably put a stitch into the video here. But you can see where it was all white, you can see like a crack of black soot. Whereas this one, you can see it on the outside edge all the way around. So I'm not sure it might have cracked horizontally in here instead of vertically or it's separating, something like that. And thinking it's time for a new DPF, sadly. Okay, so final thoughts here. So that cracked DPF will definitely have an issue with the EGR insufficient flow and slow to respond codes. So new DPF would fix that issue, except the issue is there on back order, at least from ID parts. Um, as far as the NOx sensor code, I'm not 100% sure if that will be heading in the right direction or not, but obviously a new one didn't fix the issue. So yeah, so I'd say a new DPF, new EGR filter, make it good to go. So the other option that the dealer tech had actually suggested was uh, the delete it all. Depending on your area, that's obviously illegal. So if you're deciding to remove it all, um, I've got a discount code in the description for the Tunzella Tune. And then you can just buy the pipe of your choice. But yeah, obviously follow your local laws and regulations regarding that. So I'm going to end that here. Hopefully this video kind of helps you point you in the right direction roughly. And uh, thanks for watching.